Ah. Ah. Good evening, gamers. No, no, no. Bubs, you don't loop shit. No, no, no. He's... He's not... Don't, don't listen to him. Anyways, welcome gamers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is the first official series of Keyboard Talks, right? So, we're gonna be going over like some of the most basic things, which are a mechanical keyboard versus a membrane, the types of such as you will encounter, form factors, and keycap profiles. Um, so, a mechanical keyboard, it's... <laughs> it is, this is, yeah, it's a college seminar. Um, so, a mechanical keyboard is individual switches. So, let's just say your Q key breaks, you can just replace it and fix it. But on a membrane keyboard, it's a matrix covered by a rubber dome as like in this picture right so it's a membrane covered by a rubber dome and you press down and you just press down on the matrix and it if a, one key breaks you can't fix it because it's interlocked um yeah so that's like a main difference between membrane and mechanical one's membranes uniform while mechanical is individual parts um yeah so there's also but since membranes are only rubber domes or like rubber sheets you can't really get difference in feel or tactility and like it can't be personalized to you as for mechanical keyboards um there are difference uh different ones such as like um, this like this is a mechanical keyboard it's individual things where it's different topics or like different like things right but as you saw in that photo there is individual switches where it's like each individual key is a switch and there's three main types of switches which are linear which they all there go smooth and as you can see by the stem which is the part the metal is pushing that's there's uh it's smooth and it goes down smoothly and it's the quietest of the three types of switches um, and then there is also tactile, which is, um, are you using a, you're using a mechanical keyboard, right, Mego? Yeah. Okay. So this, the contact leaf might be dead. So as you can see, yeah, it might be, it might just be the contact spring. Or the contact leaf. So you see the little moving mechanical part on the, the left side of the spring? That's it's that's uh the reason why your keyboard can work or your switch works is. So over time it can erode or it could just not actuate. And by just by just heavy use. Um that might be a reason. If you've had your keyboard since 2016, that's about five years. Yeah, okay, it might be a loose there's a lot of options where it can either be a loose spring, a loose, just it's just loose in general. Um, contact spring is damaged, or there's a plethora of options that it can happen. Um, yeah, but tactile switches, they're like linears, but they have a little bump which give you uh, physical feedback. In terms of buying. A new switch um you would need to just like desolder the entire or that switch replace it see if it works in the first place because the, the the sockets might also be shortened depending on what it's been through if it has water damage or just eroded in general um hold on yeah so it, it there's a lot of options that can happen you never spilled anything on it it might just be general erosion um depending on what you use your keyboard for i can recommend cheaper options if you are willing to look at that yeah yeah it most likely is just wear wear and weathering 
Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's probably just weathering then. Um. It happens, obviously. But. Like, there's only so much you can do. Alright. <laughs> okay, small. Um. I. Depending on. I personally would. That's just my option. Or my opinion. We are learning today, Xavier. We, uh, we already went through the first topic of the difference between a mechanical keyboard and a membrane keyboard. We are currently learning the differences in the switches. Uh, so we went over linear. Linears are... Yeah, uh, linears are uh, key switches where they have a... Their contact, their contact part is smooth, so it goes down well, linearly. While tactile switches have a are like linear sense but have a bump on the the stem, which cause a uh, physical feedback. And then there is also clicky, as you can see here, it's completely different. While uh, tactiles and linear switches are usually just one piece, clicky switches are uh, two pieces. So this is called a click jacket, where it's an individual part moving to make a quote-unquote click sound. There is a different type of clicky switch called a click bar that we can get to next week. Um, uh, so clicky switches are usually the loudest because they make a harsh click noise it can be dampened with lube or foam inside the pcb and case um there's a lot of options um where but that's that's a topic for next week we're just going over the dif difference when people think of mechanical switch uh keyboards they usually think of clicky because it makes a quote unquote clicky sound um yeah and then as for that's all for switches there's also different types of switches like frankenstein and like all that but we can get there when we get there um also uh, there's also form factors for keyboards which if you look at a normal keyboard you think of like the number keys the f keys the arrows the navigation cluster and the numpad that is called a full size keyboard or a hundred percent um, there's different sizes. So you can see here that. So 10 keyless, right? These are the more compact layouts. 10 keyless are just removing the numpad. Um, and then there's also 60%, which is just the, the number row, the number row and like the alphas and text modifiers and then there's also other custom layouts which are 68 and 75 uh they both have <laughs> they both have arrow keys um but these are more like compact and like fill a large option of what people want to do with the keyboard um i personally prefer 60 percent uh i the largest i will go is a 75 percent keyboard um, personally for me, I would go 10 keyless keyboard with an external numpad. That's what I would do personally, as if you are a working person. Um, I, I don't like bigger keyboards. Like the biggest I'll go with is like a 68% or 70%. Um, because I, I like having my dedicated arrow keys, but as long as I get my dedicated arrow keys, and that's all that matters for me. That's uh, that's my personal option. Um, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with full size keyboards. If you need to use that, if you need to use a full size for like work or something, it's hundred percent understandable. I personally would use a. 10 keyless with a 
471. Yeah, that's a pretty big keyboard. I personally would just go 10 key, uh, 10 keyless with an external numpad. It might be a little bit more expensive than buying a full size outright, but um, it the options there. But if you just don't want to use an external numpad due to like USB slots or just you don't you feel like it might clutter your desk a little bit more uh, or like the just visual clutter, I would just use a ten keyless as I said before. Um. 3 millimeter, 39 millimeters in height. That's a pretty tall keyboard. That's probably high profile, I believe. Because you're using, yeah, it's a, it's a high profile because you're using a Razer Black Widow. Okay. Um, on to the profiles, keycap profiles. So in terms of that, there is different keyboard keycaps heights, right? So these are probably the most readily available ones. Um, the most you're probably going to see is OEM because it comes with a lot of pre-built keyboards and it's the key switch profile a lot of people are introduced to at first. Um, OEM isn't bad. I don't prefer it just due to um, just due to the keyboards I used in the past. My personal favorites are DSA, XDA, SA, and Cherry. Um, Oh yeah, there's like it's just a cherry profile key, but taller, and it isn't as sculpted to, uh, isn't as sculpted to the hand as it normally is, like the key, uh, the curve of your hand. Um, knowing Razer, you probably have laser etched OEM keycaps. Uh, they're just painted and like have outlines cut out. Yeah, cat cat keycaps are very nice. If SA is a little bit too tall for you, but OEM and Cherry are a little bit too short, I recommend cat. It's a super nice keycap set. And if you type poorly, like if you have bad typing posture while resting, you're like, let's just say you rest your wrist on your desk while using your keyboard. That is actually improper typing form. Um, it should be hovering. So your keyboard, your forearm should be straight with your wrist as you're using your keyboard it's just healthier ergonomics so and which is why people uh tend to invest in wrist rest um knowing just knowing uh, what a man pre-built manufacturer do uh it would be oem because razor does not invest in cherry because cherry's actually more expensive to build because it doesn't allow laser etching, at least the factories that produce it. So it, it only does um dual sh uh, dual shot. Um, you pro yeah, you'd probably just have laser etched OEM key uh keycaps. Um, yeah. So there's also a bunch of different like honestly, if you're a programmer. I would prefer, I would recommend a lower keycap set, like a DSA or XDA. Um, but if you're someone who's a typist, like a journalist or someone who types on a regular, I would prefer SA because these essays actually allow you to quote unquote have more stamina because they feel a little bit lighter to press. Um, tie hows are like OEMs. I don't prefer them personally because they're not sculpted. Um, Cherry is like the go-to messiah of the custom keyboard world. Every like every GMK keycap set is using Cherry profile. Um, Com is kind of rare to see nowadays. Back like two to three years ago, it was very common. Um, but there's a lot of just options out there for keycap sets. Uh, like if you don't like your current key uh, keycap set as a pre-built user i would recommend just buying a cheap cheap like or a relatively cheap cherry profile kit uh keycap set or cat so i would always recommend either going lower or higher because oem is the standard um and the height on the side here is the tallest the highest peak of the row one keycaps 
So from left to right, it's row one. The first two left rows are row one. Um, row two, row three, row four, row five. So technically the farthest left the row is considered row zero due to um, some manufacturers considered it row zero because it has a different height than row one. But a lot of the people in the key, uh, keyboard community just call it row one. Um, but as you can see that SA and KAT, they're kind of like tapered at the top which means they're sculpted. So they have like a bubble, they're like a little concave, they're concave. So it lets your keyboard, uh, lets your fingers find the center of the key switch easier, which prevents uh, fat fingering. Because if you fat finger a lot, it's like usually you're pressing in between two keys because it's a uniform profile on the key. But with the concave design, it's easier to find a center, which can, it's a lot easier to prevent fat fingering. Um, fat fingering is commonly no like, uh, fat fingering is just hitting multiple keys at the same time. It can happen in typing mm -hmm. or just in video games in general. I'm pretty sure if you played uh, games with people or in general, you've probably heard people say, oh yeah, I fat fingered X key. MT3. Uh, I haven't... Hmm. MTE is good. I prefer XDA a little bit more over MTE, but it's a good keycap set. And if you want to go to the lower profiles, uh, like a little bit lower than Cherry, I would recommend going MTE or MT3. It's really, really good if you want to learn how to like type at a lower pro keycap profile. Um, because lower keycap profiles are very uniform. So if you don't, have the best typing posture or just memorization of the keyboard it could trip you up which you know it's pretty common because as you can see the lowest three rows which is xda kam and dsa they're all uniform um i can recommend sa sa profiles are very good but you might not like the higher profile it might feel a little bit uncomfortable first um it depends on what you're like if you're just using a keyboard to play games and okay it's mainly it comes down to the question do you damage your keyboard do you slam your keyboard or do you type heavy if you do any of those i'd recommend just buying a pre-built because you don't want to damage something that is considered quote-unquote art um if you have disposable funds i would recommend getting a custom getting a custom is very because you can i am building a custom right now for a close friend of mine um so let's just say he breaks one of his switches i will he can i will send him the extra key switches and tell him what to do he can just take out the switch and just put a new one in. You can honestly, so, um, with, you could get a keyboard for about 330 USD from me, including commission price, not including shipping and handling. Um, and it would, it would probably be, uh, a smaller profile, a smaller like form factor. We could, I wouldn't, I mean, you could DM me on Discord or Twitter and we can discuss details that way. If you are willing, I would always recommend a custom keyboard or a higher, like a higher quality pre-built one. Um, you could get a hot swap board, but you could also just do the lubing. I could like, you could just pay me to do lubing or whatever, if that makes sense. And we can, like, you could always just talk to me about that. Uh, what else is there? Like, I recommend the Poker or the Ann Pro if you are into smaller profile, uh, like, smaller form factors, like a 60% or the HHKB. 
Those are all high quality, extremely high quality pre-built keyboards. Um, there's also a lot of custom keyboard sets out there from the people at uh, Monster Gear, uh, KBD fans. They have hot swappable PCBs. Novel Keys has a 65% hot swappable PCB called the NK65. That is the current case I'm using for my keyboard. Um, there's a bunch of options. Like if you just have keyboard questions, just DM me on Discord or Twitter. You personally dislike small keyboards. That's understandable. We There's also bigger custom keyboards. So there's a quote unquote, there's an 1800 layout. Which is a one row shorter, tall, uh, longer than the 10 key list, but has all the keys as a full size keyboard. It's just a more compact version of a full size keyboard, um, and you can buy that off drop for about 190 USD, if I remember correctly. Um, like I could, I could go on about like custom keyboard, uh, or like form factors. I at the end of stream or at near the end, latter half of stream, I would drop links of where you can go to look at custom keyboards like hot swappable ones and just look at keycaps for a relatively cheaper price because like you could go to keycolt and spend six six hundred dollars on a keyboard case alone and just not know what the fuck to do mm, okay yeah okay yeah that, that's understandable um i would always just recommend an 1800 layout because I don't like full, I, I like smaller keyboards because it takes up less room on my desk. Um, but if you use a full size keyboard or need to use a full size keyboard, I would always look into a 1800 layout, which is. Let me let me grab a photo of this currently. So as you can see, as you see right here, an 1800 layout, it has everything a full-size keyboard has, it's just more compact. Um, this is a ISO layout, so it has a bigger enter key. There's more, there's also a, uh, ANSI layout, which is what, you know, is. So you would like the bigger keycap or bigger profile. You can get a you can get a larger one. This is just a very compact one. You can also get a larger one. Um, it would just make the portion here a little bit bigger. This is about the size of a uh, ten keyless, but you can get a full size shift. yeah so this is a this is the european layout for a keyboard yeah so this is the european layout so the north american layout which is the ansi layout is what you're typically more used to where your shift is next to your z and you know your your enter key is just about really skinny but this is an ISO layout, which is more common in Europe and the UK. Um, this is just an example of like what a 1800 layout would look like. You get 1800 ANSI. Mm. Yeah, I mean, if you want to talk out of Mego, my DMs are always open. We could, I could try to find it anti keyboard for you if you want i i like iso a lot it's because i grew up with it overseas um but i can use both layouts relatively easily uh what else is there 
Um, I don't know. I, I like the ISO layout personally. But that's just me. It's because I prefer the stepped cast lock as well. And those are usually more common on ISO layouts. Um... What else is there? You need having to re just do yeah. That's understandable personally, but if you're used to it, you're used to it. If you're not, you're not. The Dell and home keys are above the arrow keys. Uh, those that's a normal full size, but delete on this uh, would be on the numpad, and you could get rid of scroll lock or pause break to you know just there's a lot of things you can do because the pro the keyboard program that most custom keyboards use, which is via. It uh, it actually allows you to change whatever key it, uh, you want into a specific key. Yeah, so I use Via, um, and I, cause I don't I don't like Windows keys. Uh, I hate Windows keys actually. So I reprogrammed my windows key to be a macro for a game or just a macro in specific where i can just or i could just remove the the windows key outright and make it under alt or like another shift it's just something i just don't like it personally i don't know bubs you use windows key do you like one keyless keyboards i don't like yeah i could also just do that with a macro or do that with layers I don't like, I can use a Windows key, it just, I just don't like a Windows key on the first layer. So I can rebind my Windows key to go to a different layer and reprogram my caps lock to be Windows key and press Windows key V by pressing my change layer key caps lock and V, if that makes sense. Uh, I like I use the Windows key all the time. Resin printing, so artisan keycaps, I have the highest respect for. I, I love artisan keycaps. They're very, they're very like, they're well, they're art, right? Um, like resin casted keycaps, they they deserve more praise. I know some people are like, oh, it's just antique and it's just visuals, but being able to distinguish what a certain key is. So let's just say you're using a keyboard in dark and you are, you're kind of new to learning like touch typing, right? Which is just typing without looking at your keyboard. Um, having like having a resin printed key or like a special key to indicate escape and learning keys from escape downwards is very important to me. So you could have like a different height on your escape key and then have everything else be standard height and you would be able to find something from the escape key and memorize it from there. That's how, that's how I see it at least. Um, what else is there? There's also artist wrist rest, which is really great because if you aren't used to hovering your wrist while typing, Use, getting a wrist rest is a life changer um contrary to popular belief it should not be on your wrist it should actually be on your forearm it should be like the forearm connect like where your wrist is like your forearm connecting to your wrist it should be around that area thank you for the hydrate mimi uh yeah so if you there's also cheaper options for wrist rest. Like if you get a hand towel, getting on, getting a hand towel and just folding it up a bunch and using it as a wrist rest is also a way to save your wrist. 
and hands because people a lot of people are like oh i have carpal tunnel because i'm on a keyboard all day you don't have you don't have carpal tunnel because you're not on keyboard all day you have carpal tunnel because you type like a monkey so i like i want to like promote like as healthy keyboard ha habits as possible um please do not rest your wrist on your desk if your wrist is angled you are typing wrong your wrist should be straight Yeah, I like I mean Bulbas, I'm assuming you typed you uh you had your wrist on your desk while you're typing. I mean you could also just correct me if I'm wrong, but your keyboard's at the edge of the desk. Okay, that's that's better. That's actually not that that's not bad. Without a wrist rest? Okay, are you bending your wrist? Like are you like making your wrist be like an L shape or like a V shape? Yeah, that's understandable. Not really. Okay, as long as your wrists are straight, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if you are where your keyboard is. You just have to keep your wrist straight. Yeah, that's good. That's actually promoting healthy keyboard habits. Um, but just please, for the love of God, do not bend your wrist while you type. Uh... Yeah, that's, that's understandable. Like, if you're, like, you can bend your wrist a little bit, but please do not, like, have your wrist plastered down to your desk and then reach, like, using your fingers with that. You should be using your entire forearm, like, up, upper, like, upper arm, like, uh. So, a keyboard should not be used. You should not be using your wrist to move. Uh, you should be using your elbows, if that makes sense, right? You should be using your elbows to like move your hand across the keyboard or like that part of your body so your your wrist should not be the pivot point your elbow should and your wrist should be used to make fine adjustments but um yeah so if you type regularly Please move with your elbows and not your wrist, if that makes sense, right? So, like, if you look at a compass and, like, how it, like, pivots on a certain point, that should be your elbow, not your wrist, just to promote healthier habits and prevent wrist pain down the future. I was, like, I will say this now. Laptop keyboards... Laptop keyboards are atrocious when it comes to typing feel and how they are but they promote healthy typing habits and if you type on a laptop keyboard and you put your wrist hovering that's good if you have your wrist touching the actual laptop like the blank space and you see a giant sweat mark on there like if you have your like your wrist thing and moving with your wrist on your laptop keyboard, there's a problem. You should never think about it this way, right? If your wrist is connecting, there's a problem. If it's not, it's fine. Obviously, if you don't have the option to, or if your like if your desk space doesn't allow it, yeah, it's not. It's very pocket. Um, is there any other questions you guys have? Because I would like to, because I could go over, or if you just want me to go over another topic again. Hmm. What, what else? What else is there? Oh, we could talk about keyboard manufacturers. So a lot of the big key names and keyboards right now, in terms of pre-built are Corsair, Razer, uh steel series uh, there's corsair there's razor there's steel series logitech is another one there's one i'm missing Long as you got it, you can depend on me. Long as you want to 
mad cats. Um, it's a manual keyboard. Like I'm talking about quote unquote gaming keyboards, right? Like the GMMK. Uh, they're they're more new in the race. I'm talking about like the like certified brands. Like when you think of like custom like or when you think of like gaming keyboards, you think of Corsair, Razer, Steel Series. Um, let's see here. I will, okay, okay. You guys might, might get mad at me for this. But, the Magic Keyboard actually has pretty good switches. It's not good. <laughs> dragon <laughs> okay let's let's go with the, the big three right so the big three custom keyboard manufacturers um let's let's change this <laughs> um Okay, so these are the three big keyboard manufacturers, right? I've used all three extensively. I have used them for years. I swap between them. I currently do not own them anymore, but these are probably the biggest names in keyboard cut uh, up gaming keyboard manufacturing, right? Corsair, Razer, and Steel Series. Yeah. The switches are good, it's just they're not made properly. They use scissor switches, which is very, very good. But that's a different topic. That's a different topic entirely. Analog switches? Yeah, of course. So, if you're going to buy a pre-built gaming keyboard, I personally would recommend buying Corsair or Steel Series. Steel Series and then Corsair and then Razer. This is also including their programs, which are like, oh, like Corsair or I IQ for Corsair, Razer Synapse. And I don't believe Steel Series Steel has one. Um, so for keyboards, right? You have full size and 10 keys report Steel Series. The Apex is actually a very good one. I use the Apex Pro when I had a when I had uh, the Steel Series keyboards, the Apex Seven and the Apex Apex Five and Apex Sevens are also relatively good. Um, the my only problem with this, the only problem I have with this is the wrist rest is the worst out of all three. I will say it now, Razer for wrist rest has the best out of all of the big three keyboard uh, gaming keyboard manufacturers um steel series in my opinion has the best switch uh switch layout um in terms of what i mean by that is they don't move as much and they don't rattle um the space bar could use a little bit of work but you could just oh fun fact if your space bar is rattly you can swap the keyboard around and it will become less rattly. That is a pro tip. Uh, and it, it might feel a little bit different, but it feels a lot better. At least for me, in my opinion. Uh, so, you see how the space bar here is like, th like this, right? If you take it off and like flip it around, right? Or like the, the line here is on the bottom. It will make this uh, the stabilizers rattle a little bit. Or rattle less. And this is called a reverse space bar. Okay, um It's faulty in chat. What the hell oh, scared me? Yeah. So um it it's actually more ergonomically fit 
because you're not like arching your uh, thumb over the space bar. Yeah, it's it's a little bit more ergonomic as well. Uh, if you if you're on a mechanical keyboard right now, I'd recommend flipping your space bar just to try it. Yeah, because you like it's hard to explain how it feels, but it just feels a lot better. Um, so in terms of just switch quality and just build quality, I prefer Steel Series the most. You could, if it's a space bar, you could just rip that shit up. Um, Corsair is another one. Uh, they're, they have one of the harshest bloatwares in terms of keyboards. It's crazy. They're stuck on like crazy hard. Mm. But uh, I do respect Corsair because they're they're uh, trying to experiment with low profile keycaps. Believe also, this is a lie. But people say like, oh, low profile keycaps have lower actuation. It's false. It just feels like it because you're technically typing short like you're typing less or you're pressing less to feel it but i um corsair is probably the company that gets the most respect at least in my opinion because they're actually trying to improve their keyboards um to my knowledge they are still talking to keyboard uh builders that are more in the mainstream line of YouTube. Um, be like, oh, how can we improve our keyboards? And like, what do you like about this? And what don't you like? And tell us how we can improve. Low profile keycaps and key switches. They, they're not bad. They could be better. Um, but it's a market that is slowly getting experimented in. So having Corsair be that company that takes the big leap in terms of uh, giant manufacturers is something that I can respect a lot. Razer, I dislike Razer. Um, I dislike Razer because of what they did to the keyboard, uh, mechanical keyboard scene, right? They have quote unquote mechanical feel keyboards, but they're membrane, which um, isn't isn't good because it's just a it's just a membrane keyboard with nothing else different it's just people like oh it feels mechanical so it's mechanical which is false um please just if you get a mechanical feel keyboard just don't i would i would just buy a membrane at that point personally if we just buy a membrane keyboard instead of a mechanical mechanical feel good um, but in my opinion, if you are looking to buy a pre-built pre keyboard, I would go Steel Series. If Steel Series is a little bit out of your price range, I would go Corsair and then Razer. But I can what I can recommend for buying from Razer is their wrist rest. Their wrist rest are pretty good. The wrist rest are great. I've used them before. They're, they're great, they feel comfortable, they don't get too hot because they're leather, even as leather. It's, uh, it's amazing. Um, other than that, I can't recommend buying anything from Razer. Uh, the switch rattle is, her or the st stabilizer rattle is horrendous. Um, it's, it's, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. The Razer, Razer could be better, but it's just the way they are currently is just not the greatest. Um. Oh yeah. So b back to the topic that Nego asked, right? Keyboard, uh, analog key switches. So analog key switches are a little bit different because they, uh, well, obviously they're different, but um they what's it called they can actuate at different points 
So analog key switches aren't like your standard key switches because standard key switches actuate at a set point. What well, analog? All right. So if I got an analog key switch. So analog key switches, they still function the same, but they also use a sensor in the bottom of the key. The key. Um, analog key switches are actually something that have been around since about the the 90s, no, about the 80s. Um, but they're it's re recently coming back into popularity due to just what's able to happen. So. It just gets stuck. Uh, you can send me a picture of what happened. Yes, but analog key switches are something that's coming back into popularity. Um, which is... It's not bad. I don't like analog switches personally. But it's just something that happens. Um, but they use, they either use a laser or a sensor. So, which like as a like ma magnetic sensor. So the closer the magnet gets, it's like, oh yeah, there you go. There's the actuation. Um, but laser options are, laser options are technically more consistent because magnets can dim over or like a uh, die over time. The optical one is like how much light goes through before the, the switch actuates and that's not a bad thing. I believe Razer is going with laser optical or optical switches, which is pretty big because it's a little bit more expensive and you can't spray lube optical switches, but you can dry lube them, which is like using dust instead of actual like liquid or I guess grease in this in that case. But um, there's two different types of uh, optical or analogs, which is magnetic and laser. I would prefer laser because it technically has a longer lifespan. Uh, but the magnetic ones aren't bad either. It's mainly just how what you would like to feel. Like how would how would you like to think to feel? Um, they usually are cherry style switches. Unlike Otemu or Kale, I I don't mind cherry style switches. I just prefer Kale style switches or Kaihua. Um, Kale is more of the more common manufacturer named, popularized by Novel Keys. Uh, Kaihua is the original creator. Um, and they also deassembled a little bit differently. Um, hopefully that answers your question, Mego. Wait, Mego, I think your might your keyboard might. Okay, Mego, did you see? Yeah, yeah. Um, you should be able to just pop it up. Mega, I have a question for you. If you're able to get your key switch off, uh, the cap off, I want to see what it looks like underneath. Yeah, I, I I will ignore how dirty it is because obviously people are like oh I can't keep my I I just because if you don't see underneath your key switches or don't know how dirty a keyboard can get people are like oh it's whatever right like oh it's not that dirty like, how can it be that dirty I only like type on it but dust can get trapped in it if you eat near your keyboard crumbs can get caught in it hair from animals and you um. There's dead skin cells and stuff like that. I would recommend using a compressed air thing with a toothpick with a rubber Q-tip with a rubber Q-tip. 
Um, that's what I would recommend using for cleaning keyboards. In terms of cleaning keycaps, you would take them off, put them under warm soapy, uh, get warm soapy water and rub, rub each keycap individually and then put them in a like in like a bowl or like a pot or something um and then put it just leave it after you rub each individual one leave it soaking oh okay the reason why your got stuck mego is because you have a uh, you this the way your stabilizer works is a little bit different than a normal keys uh stabilizer um yeah, so your your key switch just won't let you flip it. The way your just the way your stabilizers work just won't let you flip your key uh keyboard or spacebar around, if that makes sense. Because uh your stabilizer has a hook under like two hooks, I believe. Thank you for the posture check, all free. Like, I believe you should be able to look at your, like, the two, like, black lines on the side and be able to just see, like, a, like, a little, like, hook, right? Or, like, a opening where your state of uh, the bar can go underneath. And if you just put it under there, your key, uh, your space will work again. The reason why your space bar got stuck is because it the stabilizer could not help it go up. Does it come out? If it comes out, then you will be able to flip it over. But if it doesn't, you can't. I haven't used the Razer 2016 Black Widow Chroma, so I can't help you with that. Um, but yeah, Mego, if you do want to talk about more keyboards in depth, you just DM me. Um, yeah, uh, same with you, Bubs. I know you're like, kind of, you're like kind of new to the scene, but you know, you can always just DM me, Bubs, if you just want help of like purchases. Um, my games are always open on like Twitter, Discord. I would say Twitch, but I don't think anyone checks their Twitch DMs. Um, yeah, so with that, um, is there any other questions you have, Mego, Bubs, maybe if he's still here, or just anyone in general? Um, Because I think that's it. And then we can start talking about next week topics. Hmm. You learned a lot. Uh, This is just like the basics. This is like. Like if anyone wants to like come to me for a custom keyboard. I'll be like yeah here are the basics. Like what, what side like how big do you want your keyboard. Do you like what type of switches you like? What kind of like these are the profiles you want to be taller or shorter than your standard OEM key bit key thing? And like if you are going to get a mechanical keyboard, here's what you can look out for. And if you're getting a membrane, here's what you have to look out for. Um, would you would you like next week's topics to be a surprise or know what it is beforehand? As like a general question. <gasps> yeah, it's more ergonomic though. Because it's just the way your hands naturally on a keyboard. It actually is promotes healthier typing posture as well. Um, yeah, 
it's almost flush of the frame, but it will feel better to type on, at least in my opinion. Mm. I'm trying to think, right? Would it be better if it's like a school thing or like, oh yeah, next time we come back, we're going to be talking about etc 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 and then go over we covered the previous week would that be better that might be better no yeah it's um a lot of people are like oh it's just me flipping over my space for how different could it be and then they try it yeah see it's it's a little like trick of pre-built keyboards that you should be flipping the spacebar because it actually feels higher quality that way. Um, let's see here. If we, I I couldn't tell you. I I could not tell you. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's you. Well, you're sacrificing RGB because it doesn't shine through. Like, so the LED is only on one side of the key switch, and that's why all your keycaps are, or all your things are not RGB. RGB just green. Oh, okay. Um, so if you look at the top of the key switch, you will see the LED there. That's why all the letterings and all that is put at the top of the keyboard instead of the middle or a key, a key cap. So the RGB can go through. But if you are, yeah, so it's like, oh yeah, here's the RGB. It's actually can damage your keycaps by having your... Damn, Unluck unfortunate. I mean, I personally don't care for RGB, but that's also someone who's been using keyboards since, or like getting into the custom keyboard since like 2014, 2015. Almost, was that like seven years now? Six, seven years. Um, yeah, so next week, that's, that's I believe next week, right? Uh, a lot of keyboards nowadays can support RGB. It's just I personally don't like it. Um, just you can DM me about it, Mego, and I can try to find you a full size keyboard with RGB in your price range. And if you want to cut, if you want to commission me, I greatly appreciate it. Um, but I will. Yeah, so next week, right, we cover mechanical versus membrane, types of key switches, form factors. Uh, next week, I think we will be typing, uh, going over menu, fact, factures. I had spelled that so wrong. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you. Manufacturers, types of e-switches, um, lube, and sta stabilizers, no, not, uh, stabilizers, And let's see. Let's. I, I want to try to go at a minimum four topics per per week. Mm, manufacturers type of skis, which is stabilizers. 
O rings? Oh yeah, O rings. Let's go with O rings too. O rings. O ring slash sound. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank. Thank you, Mego. Um, as the week goes on, I will be thinking. Uh, O rings have a variable effect, but. Yeah, I mean, if you next week, I will be going over a quick TLDR of what we went over this week, and then we will be going over to next week's topics, which is manufacturers type of key switches, stabilizers, and O rings, and that would also be going into in depth of where you can buy custom key switches, um, what else is there in terms of. Rose will O rings. Okay. We will go over O rings and what they really do um, in the future. Uh, or I guess next week, right? Um, with that, I believe we should be good to go. Um, but next week, we'll be talking about manufacturers and like where you can buy custom keyboard parts, key switches such as franken switches um click bars and like other types of key switches such as scissor and just you know manufacturers stabilizers and what a stabilizer really is and how you can do to improve it and stuff like that and o-rings which a lot of people have a common misconception of what they do um but yeah, thank you guys for coming. Um, tomorrow. Yeah, obviously this is like the first one year. So I just end up having people come and just asking questions is super appreciative. Um, what else? Like obviously, hopefully as it goes on, uh, more people can come and just have just general questions. But uh, thank you, Mego, Bubs, uh, and I believe uh, Brandon. Thank you guys for just stopping by um, and just asking questions. Uh, it's actually really appreciative. And I hope to see you guys next week. I just want to plug this, right? Uh, I, do, I do take custom keyboard commissions. And I do have socials and a discord um with that there i will just say thank you um i believe that's it uh let's find someone to raid um Is there anyone doing like anything chill? Actually, no. You guys want to watch fucking? You guys want to watch a watch a bogus? Let's see here. Nikkei? We could do Nikkei. Yeah, that's right, Nikkei. Um, do you have any last questions before we, like, leave? Brandon? Or not Brandon. Sorry, Mego. I was looking at Twitter. <laughs> do you have any, uh... Any questions that you just want to answer before we dip? Yeah, um, again, if you do want to commission me or stuff like that, let me know. Um, yeah, so slash raid Nada. Raid subs, raid. 
If you're a sub, you can have the raid message. If you're not a sub, there's that one there. Um, no problem, Brandon. Thanks for stopping by. I honestly, this is kind of something that I kind of just threw together. Uh, I really do appreciate you guys stopping by and actually like actively wanting to learn about key switches and just keywords in general. Um, because I actually just haven't really been playing up to my character to like playing that bit. <laughs> um, next week we'll be going coming with manufacturers, types of switches and stabilizers and O-rings as I said before. Um, this week I actually have a collab. I will be posting that on Twitter later. Um, but uh, thank you guys for stopping by. Um, I will let you guys... I will be posting my schedule later today or tomorrow morning. But hope to see you guys next week in terms of her just the second lesson. Alright, see you guys later.